Michael Gorman's Stray Away Child. I suspect he wrote this tune over a period of time because it's a lengthy tune with something like, um, yeah, there are six parts in this tune. I sat down and worked out what it is I play because I learnt this tune some years ago and learnt it from memory. And I'm lucky enough that when I do learn a tune from memory, it tends to stick. Um, so rather than referring to any websites or anything like that, I just played this tune from memory and just sat down and notated it as I went along. And there are six parts to this tune and each part has 16 bars or measures. So it's a very lengthy tune. And looking at it, really, I've broken it down into part one, part two, part three, four, five and six to make it easier for anyone who wishes to learn this tune and try and commit it to memory. I seem to remember when I first learnt this, this melody, it took me about a week or so to kind of get it up here so I would remember it, possibly two or three weeks. Um, it was played quite a lot at my local session. So that's why I sat down and, and listened to Michael Gorman's version and tried to, to play along with his, his playing of this tune. Um, and sort of adapted it to my own style. It's pretty close to Michael's version. But there may be one or two places where it differs slightly. But certainly this, this is the version that I've, I've come up with and play with. And played so, for, so, for some years now. And it, it's the one that I remember. So that's the one that I recorded on my original video, The Stray Away Child. So what I'll do is I'll work through each section because this is a request to make a tutorial video for playing this tune. But actually the tune is just a slog really all the way through. I believe it's called a double jig because there are two sets of three notes in each bar. So that I believe denotes the idea that it's a double jig. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one bar, one, two, three, one, two, three, next bar, one, two, three, one, two, and so on. So it's a double jig. So the, the notes are more or less arranged in sets of threes. So um, I thought the best thing to do is just play each section and go through it with you so that you can learn the basic notation. It starts off with a, a nice slide. This is the slide. really doing is sliding on the first note of the A string and the first note of the D string. There's definitely that, um, you can hear that grouping of three notes. to Michael playing this tune that's exactly the way he plays it he, he, he plays it with a distinct sound you can hear the groups of three notes that he plays three two two sets of three notes for each bar
So that's the first section. Now I'll play it slowly, a little bit slower for you if you're learning this one by ear. Three, four. Now we go on to section two, similar to section one in some respects. It's once again it's grouping of three notes. Um, but this time we go from the G, D and the A string and we go up to the E string. Okay, so the only thing tricky there might be when you have to do this. I'll point it out to you. That flipping from the A string to the E string. So you've got your first finger down on the first note of the A string, which is the B. So you come up from the A. You're sort of going from the uh, the B over to the open E. That's quite tricky, I think. Well, I certainly found it tricky when I was first learning this tune. that part because it goes from the E string right down to the G string. That shows that, that Michael when he composed this tune really thought about it because dropping down from, right from the top of the, the e, right from the E string lovely you go all the way down um, so I'll just repeat part two again and this time I'll stop talking and play it slowly so we can uh, make sure we learn it so it starts off like this Okay, so that's part two. Once again, that's 16 bars, 16 measures of the tune. In fact, if you were just writing a normal, composing a normal jig, 32 bar jig, you wouldn't progress any further. Which makes me wonder if, if, if that's how Michael approached this tune. Maybe he got the, this idea first and thought, I'll extend it. He probably, because he played a lot live, in various pubs in London so he probably came up with the idea of adding to it and adding to it this is sometimes what happens when you play tunes out you're playing in front of people 
and you add to tunes and you extend them and I suspect this is what may have happened here. So the, the next part, part three. <laughs> good rhythmical section there um, it repeats itself pretty much for, for the first after the, you've played the first um, eight bars you, it more or less repeats for the next eight bars but I'll play it through slowly three four to part four so we're on to the second sheet I would advise you to print out these sheets um, because then it does give you a nice big guide and I've printed them out or I should say I've, I've posted them on the community section in quite a nice large format so it's nice and easy for us all to read um, part four here we go Basically that's just a working through all of those measures. Let's play it slowly. Three, four. complicated in playing that as I say it's just working through the tune now this next part goes up onto the E string rather nice this part Once again Michael does the same thing he starts he goes up onto the E string to play that nice melody da, 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 do, 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 do. and then he decides to drop right down to that G string again so you run right the way down across the fingerboard very nice indeed that's a nice touch three four oh I'll play it slowly this time of course The next part's interesting, a little bit tricky because we've got these two bars or this first measure 
uh, the start sounds like this. So that is basically the open E string of course and then the D and the B. And then to finish this tune, you would generally play the tune twice and then at the very end you would just put the A section on again. to put a little double stop in there that's just the um, <clears throat> that's just the B on the G string which is like your middle finger and then the E on the D string which is like your first finger okay now what I'll do is I'll play the whole lot it's a bit of a marathon <laughs> but it's a beautiful tune I won't go too quickly and it might help you if you're learning this tune so I'll start from the top, three, four.
Michael Gorman's Stray Away Child. An amazing tune, without any doubt. Stands out as being one of the classics, in my opinion. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that anyway, and I hope you found this video useful in learning this tune. Give yourself plenty of time to learn it, because it doesn't sink into the memory immediately. It's a bit like learning the, the uh, lyrics to a song. It can take a little while to, uh, to remember everything and without having to think about it and certainly not having to pick up music because that will just hinder you from um, it, playing this tune in a relaxed manner. Okay, so I hope that was useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye now.